Hello and welcome. This is Matthias 76. Together, we are decoding the deception. Together, we're back for part three of chapter 17, talking about the great prostitute. So, no further ado, we're going to jump right in. If you have not, if you have not watched the first two videos on Revelation 17 and the great prostitute, and really there are three that precede this, put in the thumbnails on the screen. The links are in the description down below. Encourage you, go watch those. Useful information, and I'm not going to cover any of what was covered previously. We're just jumping in, picking up where we left off, talking about the great prostitute. She's seated on many waters. That's where we're picking up. And the angel said to me, The waters that you saw where the prostitute is seated are peoples and multitudes and nations and languages. And the ten horns that you saw, they and the beast will hate the prostitute. They will make her desolate and naked and devour her flesh and burn her up with fire. For God has put it in their hearts to carry out his purpose by being of one mind and handing over their royal power to the beast until the words of God are fulfilled. And the woman that you saw is the great city that has dominion over the kings of the earth. There's a whole lot here. There's a whole lot here. And the, and the key point in this section is that, and, and this is, a, a great reset <laughs> call out here. Klaus Schwab and his leaders throughout the world who were all part of the World Economic Forum, Klaus Schwab, his minion, Yuval Noah Harari, who calls all of us useless eaters, they talk about a great Reset. They talk openly about everything that we know and everything that we perceive of as being our reality coming to an end. Even the way we view life coming to an end and changing and evolving. And they believe themselves to be the ones who have the hand on the wheel that is steering all of that. They believe that they control the levers through which the machinery is operated that will bring that about. They do not have good things in mind for you, but before they can bring any of that about, the prostitute must die. The socio-political economic system that exists that is, the ocean in which we swim in this world has to be drained. It has to be gone. That is what the Great Reset is. And that is the great eye-opener that I had as I've been spending the last five years studying the book of Revelation in great detail, understanding that the World Economic Forum and Klaus Schwab, what they are talking about, is laid out exactly here in chapter 17 and 18 of the book of Revelation. They intend to kill the socio-political, economic, and cultural system of our world. And it is prophetically foretold here. And it is a judgment of God that will be carried out. And the angel said to me, the waters that you saw where the prostitute is seated, and that goes back to the opening verses of this chapter, where the prostitute is seated are peoples, multitudes, nations, and languages. Now, repeatedly, so many times, and we'll count them, I've done this before, but one, two, three, four, five, six... Seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten times in the book of Revelation, this fourfold moniker for the unbelieving people in this world. And it's always about unbelievers. And you can look at all these references. I'll scroll through them slowly 
So you can pause and go look them up if you like. It's always about unbelievers. Okay. She has control and dominion over them. So that's she is the ocean in which we swim, I think is a good picture for that. I've used it before. And the ten horns that you saw, those rulers, that t- why the ten horns instead of the seven heads? I told you before in the last video, ten represents completion. All the rulers, the ones who are extant at this time, all of them. And the ten horns that you saw, they and the beast. She rides on the beast. They support one another. It's hard to separate one from the other, but they are distinct. She has gotten where she has gotten because the governments of the world have promoted her, have encouraged all of us to chase after this greed, this this world defined by a reality, defined by greed and avarice and perversion. But the ten horns that you saw, they and the beast will hate the prostitute. Now, you hear Klaus Schwab talking, and the World Economic Forum basically popped out of the shadows just a few years ago, right before the whole COVID thing began. You hear them talking about destroying everything, saying you'll own nothing and you'll be happy, talking about reducing the world's population, talk about talking about freeing us from carbon-based life to go evolve into technological life and reality. Think Elon Musk and Neuralink, etc. In case you thought Musk was a good guy. Because he is, because he'll let you say what you want on Twitter. Sure. Sure, he's a great guy. Forget the Baphomet costume for Halloween and the upside down cross. I'm sure he was just having some fun. They will make her desolate and naked and devour her flesh and burn her up with fire. If you're doing yourself a disservice, if you do not take this verse, Revelation 17, 16, right here, and commit it to memory, file it away. This is what they intend to do. They will make her the socio-political, economic, and cultural system that we know that has shaped our reality and not for the better. They will make her desolate and naked and devour her flesh and burn her up with fire. They're going to destroy it. Everything that you know, there will be a calamitous end that is brought about. And I've speculated in other videos about how that might happen. It can only be speculation. It can be through disease and poverty and the end of the economic system as we know it. And we could well be on the brink of that, who is to say. But they intend to destroy it all. That is their aim and goal, because then if they tear it down, and remember, Satan hates everything God loves. He wants to undo everything that God holds dear, everything that God made. They want to destroy his creation and redo it in their image. They want to destroy man and reshape it in a technological manner. Transhumanism, according to their desire, they hate God's design for things with man and woman, Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. And so they promote all of the sexual perversion and transgenderism. It's taking what God loves and trampling on it. It's taking the rainbow that God gave as the promise that he would never again wipe out all evil on the world at one time through a flood and using that rainbow as the banner under which perversion marches across the land. Satan hates everything God loves. Satan hates babies. Jesus says, Suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. Do you ever wonder why Satan hates babies and children so much? But they will make her desolate. And this is a pretty harsh picture here. It's not they're going to kill her. They will make her desolate and naked and devour her flesh. Don't you just see a pack of hyenas devouring 
something and devour her flesh and burn her up with fire. What's left gets burned with fire. There will be nothing left. That's what this is saying. Why? For God has put it in their hearts to carry out his purpose. We started on chapter 17, and I drew attention to the fact that it is one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls who takes John and shows him this scene, judgment, judgment. And he will show, come, I will show you the judgment of the great prostitute. This is about judgment. This is about God meeting out what this wickedness, this rebellion, this perversion deserves. And again, what does that say to us about our interaction with that world? What does that say to us about how we look upon the things that this world holds dear? For God has put it into their hearts. God is in control. God built Pharaoh up so he could bring Pharaoh low and that his might and his power might be known to all. God raised up Nebuchadnezzar so that he could lay Nebuchadnezzar low. No matter how things look, and remember, putting it on the screen because it's so important, it is a, a consistent truth Throughout the scriptures, it is a key point for understanding all things that matter. Nothing is as it appears. It does not look in this world as though God is in charge, and yet he is. It does not look as though truth and goodness and God's glory will prevail, but it will. And that is why he reminds us again and again. And we need go to, to Proverbs 21, verse 1. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. As the rivers of water, he turns it whithersoever he will. God is sovereign. He is in charge. He is in control. God has put it into the hearts of the powers of this sinful world to carry out his purpose by being of one mind and handing over their royal power to the beast until the words of God are fulfilled, until all things are done, until he decrees it is finished and judgment takes place. And the woman that you saw is the great city that has dominion over the kings of the earth. Now the next chapter talks at length about the powers that be in this world, the merchants, others mourning over the death of the great prostitute. And all of that, and we'll cover it, not today, but all of that is for the sake of emphasis. Again, it's repeated, it's made very clear, it's explained in different ways because we have such a hard time getting our minds around that everything that we know, that everything upon which we rely, the economic system, hey, it is not easy to get my mind around that all of this is going to come to an end. I've got to go to the store. I've got to buy food. I've got to get gas. I'm going to pay the mortgage, pay the rent, whatever it might be. I've got bills to pay. Christmas is coming. We're going to celebrate materialism right? <laughs> with, with all the gifts and, and, and everything else. It's hard for us to understand that it's all going to end. But I will close with this. If it is to end, if in the next chapter he says, come out of her, then how should I then live? How should I view these things? We will be back to talk about Revelation 18. I want to thank you for listening. Hey, give us a thumbs up. It makes a difference. Pray for what we do here. I encourage you to do that as this goes out around the world and more and more people are listening. I encourage you to support us. We need your help to keep this going. We need your help. 
There is a link up above right here for financial support. It's also in the description down below. Hey, subscribe to this channel if you haven't yet. And when you subscribe, hit that notification bell so that you're made aware when we put out a new video. Share this video with somebody else. You know someone who would benefit from hearing this message. Put it out on your social media feed. Email it to a friend. And finally, do drop by and pay us a visit here at DecodingTheDeception.com. This is Matthias76. Together, we are Decoding the Deception. God bless and have a great day.